law criminal and traffic defense attorney in Manassas, Virginia. Today, I am joined with a very special guest from all the way across the country, Isaac <laughs> Spenson, who is joining us from California. So here hey, it is noon as we are going live, um, if you're actually watching this right now, but to Isaac, it is nine o'clock, uh, first thing in the morning. Um, Isaac is going to be talking to us about effective video strategies for business. And the reason why we're having this conversation today is because a lot of people are, are turning to video. A lot of people are watching video during this uh, the time of shutdown, even though we're starting to get out of the shutdowns. But a lot of people have started using video and turning to video. And there are a lot of tips and tricks and techniques that we all really should know because maybe not everybody should be doing videos. So right now I'm going to, well, actually, before I turn it over to Isaac, um, if you guys could all let us know where you are checking in from. I'm in Manassas, Virginia. Isaac is in California. If you could tell us where you're checking in from and throughout the course of this webinar, feel free to type a, a question or a comment in the comments and we will try to get Isaac to answer it today because he is the expert and you don't wanna miss anything he has to say. So Isaac, I'm gonna turn it over to you. If you could tell everybody a little bit about what it is that you do, um, and then we'll just get right into the questions. Awesome, sounds good. And I'm not seeing the Facebook feed, so let me know if stuff comes in. All I see is our little conversation here, so I'm in it. Uh, so hey everybody, welcome, good morning, and or good afternoon now. Um, so I am Isaac Svensson. I started a, a video first marketing and production company here in Long Beach, California. And I have been doing this professionally for 10 years. Um, I initially started with a desire to go into Hollywood. I think a lot of um, uh, a lot of people in my generation thought that they wanted to make movies. And then when I, you know, a lot, when you hit Hollywood, um, after going to film school, you realize that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of kind of personality that you have to bring to the table. And I wasn't really willing to do any like backstabbing or anything like that. So Hollywood wasn't exactly for me. Um, but I found myself in Long Beach, California, I fell in love with the city. And I've been wanting to help tell the stories of the people here in this city. Um, and it, by by extension, the the story of the city itself um, long term. Um, and so I've been gearing up for the last three years to start a project that I started this year called Long Beach Local Business. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today as a case study. Um, but I have had experience uh, with a, 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 the whole gamut of... Um, video experiences. And so I've had to learn a lot of different stuff and I now bring all that expertise to businesses so that they can um, I mean, ultimately sell stuff, right? Like that's what, mm -hmm. that's what we're doing is we're selling stuff. Um, but we do that by communicating and the communication is the foundation of a relationship. And without a really good high quality relationship, I'm not going to convince anybody that to trust me. I'm not going to convince anybody to, to get my product. They're not going to believe in the stuff I have. So that starts with really healthy and effective communication. Um, and that's, that's what video is good at. And then, uh, you know, I want to talk today a little bit too about using the, the right tools and that includes, you know, software and hardware, right? That's software like people skills and hardware like better cameras. Um, and just the, the combination of all those things, uh, software like storytelling too. Um, the combination of all those things together end up with really effective video strategies for your business. Um, otherwise, there's so much noise. There's just so much video content out there that it's really easy to get lost in uh, in the sea of content. I mean, one of the things is that you've got you know 500 hours of video content going up to YouTube every minute on YouTube. Yeah, like on YouTube. So in one minute, there will be 500 hours of content uploaded to YouTube. And now we're trying to compete with that. It's it's just, you gotta figure out the tools to help you uh, float in that sea of content. So uh, is that good enough? How, how are we doing? <laughs> uh, that's, that's a lot of information. I don't even know where to start with my questions. Um, you said you've been doing this for 10 years and then you had this project, uh, Long, Long Beach Local Business, is that what it's called, that you've yeah. been, thinking about or working on or tinkering with for three years? Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's talk about um, video in the time of COVID, right? Yeah. Um, so this is where I find a lot of people, and this is the conversation that, that gets brought up a lot right now. Now, I think you're right. You said at the beginning of this, that people are starting to shift more towards video content and we're communicating more and more on 
you know, in digital spaces, as we're letting our um, <laughs> physical spaces cool off and let the let the bugs die in those those areas. So we we find ourselves having more um, video conversations, and it, it was coincidental that I I've been wanting to do this project for for the last three years. Um, so I have this idea. I want to do a long term story of Long Beach. Now I decided um, probably five years ago that I wanted to do the project and I've been preparing for it starting about three years ago, trying to build the infrastructure for my own company and my own video production um, to tell the story between 2020 and 2040 for Long Beach, California through the small businesses and the businesses and the people here. Um, so I would be helping businesses, law firms, restaurants, whomever it is, um, tell their stories, but then collecting the footage so that we can look long term at what what the feelings are of what it's like to be doing business in a very interesting city, and then sort of tell the story of of an American evolution. Um, so I was ready to go in 2020, and I was getting some clients, and I started to have the 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 idea of how I was going to run my business. And my business, or again, here, since we're using this as a case study, my business is a lot like anybody else's business, right? I have a service that I'm offering um, a client. Some of my services look like products, but it's also um, mm -hmm. a professionality. And I'm, I'm, I've got, you know, uh, a mixture of all the different kinds of things that I can offer a person um, or a business. And um, so as I'm trying to build up you know, clientele, all of a sudden COVID hits. Mm -hmm. And what am I, you know, what am I going to do now that the, the clients that I did have aren't thinking like, oh, I can afford, you know, video. They, they, it's one of the first things to go on the chopping block because um, they see it as an, as an excess or as a, or, or, I mean, it, it feels like a luxury, right? Like I've got my camera, I've got my cell phone, I've got, you know, anything that, I've got a million tools that allow me to talk to my audience. Why do I need a video person? So my work kind of dried up. Um, so what, what my shift ended up becoming was instead of doing the videos specifically for other people, I, for the first time, started making videos for myself, for my own brand, which is the Long Beach local business brand. I started telling the stories of businesses pivoting um, in the time of COVID and how they pivot and how they, uh, how they're going to survive in this you know environment. Um, so I have now eight videos, which are, I'm really proud of them, of local businesses um, shifting towards um, uh, strategic uh, changes, uh, um, shifting towards, um, I mean, just by, by way of example, my favorite video so far is one of Trademark Brewery here in town. And what they did is they they weren't able to have people come into their tap room, um, but they teamed up with a local distillery and they started brewing hand sanitizer instead of beer. And that was a very interesting story that I showed up and I said, hey, I need to hear the story of how you guys pivoted in this way. Um, so I my own pivot was to start using video for myself, right? So now I'm making video work for me. Um, and the results of that are huge. And there's a couple of different interesting takeaways. Um, so the, the first one there is that this is a community service. And I, because of my own, like my own communication stopped, right? So we're going back to our, our case study and the idea that our businesses had our normal flow and then relationships kind of have a, a stopping point as we move away from physical. Now I've got an opportunity to use video to work for me to replace the, the to replace the normal um, funnels that I had in, in other arenas. So the videos I put out are a community service with my name attached. Are we starting to see what this might look like? this is like this video here, right? This is a community service with your name attached. I mean, it's, it's a brilliant idea where all of a sudden I'm giving to my community um, my, 
my professional opinions, my my expertise, and I'm jumping into the, into the conversation as a way of saying like, hey, you know what? I've got my own, you know, unique uh, superpowers. I've got my own um, community. I've got stuff that I can offer. And then people say like, oh, that's really cool. I'm really appreciative for that. And now using video, we've started to build trust. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to pause. Sorry. I'm, I know I'm telling my story, so I, I got caught up in it. Let's, uh, I'm going to slow down. Help me out. What are we, where are we at? How do we feel? No, you are good. This was all uh, very good information. And it actually uh, made me think of something. I'm doing something very similar. I am sure that the production of your videos is, is vastly different than mine, but I have been featuring local businesses on my Facebook lives. Um, and it just started as just a random idea I had one time and it was just so successful and I had fun doing it. And, uh, so now I do them every week. Um, I know you, you had, uh, seen a few of them on my, um, on my Humbrecht law page, but I, it, I, I never even intended to do it. It just kind of happened and it's going really well and, and I like doing it. And I will say, and we probably should address this before I started I think I started on April 1st was the first time I did a Facebook live. I hated video. I hate the sound of my voice. I hate to see myself on video. I, for the longest time, just wouldn't do it. And then during the shutdowns, there is the only way I could communicate with people. Great. So I just, I just jumped into it. And, um, and, you know, here we are, you know, my, I don't know, 15th or 16th video, something like that. Right, but right. I don't know. That was just kind of a random musing. But no, no, that's, and, and it, it's a really good point because it, it's so hard for the people. And, you know, there's this weird thing the people who do video do video, the people who don't do video <laughs> don't do video. I'm a person who actually loves being behind the camera, I don't like being in front of it. Um, so the idea of doing video for myself was such a hard jump to make. Because I, I'm, I think I know the, I think I know the opportunities it affords, but mm -hmm. it just takes up, it takes up so much time and effort. And I want to take care of my own clients. So I think I, I think I get it almost a hundred percent what people are thinking about when they're thinking about doing video. It's like, oh, I could do it for myself, but it takes up so much time and effort. And mm -hmm. if I do do it for myself, you know, th then and this is what I see is then let's like, well, it, it's kind of almost a shame because the people who are willing to to do it don't always have the necessary skills to make, make it make sense to really mm -hmm. make it make sense. Um, so consistency. I mean, there are a few things we talked before um, about, about some video stuff and we've chatted about video in the past. Um, but so here's some of the takeaways I've, I've gotten from my Long Beach local business things, right? So here are effective video strategies for business. Um, I'm, I'm talking about my business here. We all kind of understand a little bit about the, the framework, but let's talk about what's going on behind the scenes. It's consistent, right? My my videos are, are try, I'm trying to get them to be uh, the same quality. And so I use consistency as a way to talk about the quality of it over and over and over again. People know what to, to expect. And so now that I'm doing videos, people are are they were more inclined to watch them once they know what to expect from them. Um, if they get an appetite for it, I, if, I mean, we all have our favorite flavors of ice cream, right? Mm -hmm. We all like cookies and cream or, uh, you know, um, coconut ice cream or whatever it is, but we like to go back to, it. I like strawberry myself. I was going to shout out to strawberry ice cream. Wow. Um, it's underappreciated really. So, you know, I always get, you know, Got to talk about strawberry ice cream. I got to uh, interrupt you right there. I'm sorry. Chocolate peanut butter. That's the best ice cream in gelato ever. It, you, it's a it's a winter flavor. No, fruit <laughs> flavor dessert. Mm -mm, no, I, I I have some I'm, opinions that I'm very, I'm, I'm very vehement about. And that's I'm one saying. I can go back to your support. Strawberry ice cream. Stra underrated it is underappreciated. It's my roommates too feel the same way. Strawberry ice cream gets under underappreciated. So we like, we go back to it, right? We, we are uh, connected to our flavors. That's the whole point. We've just demonstrated how much we're connected to our flavors. Well, the consistency of your videos is a lot like an ice cream flavor. You get people to get a taste of it. 
or you start making videos of on your own and you get a taste for your own videos and doing it. I mean, your, the, your format, and now it's hard to stray away from it. We only want okay. it to go up, not down. So mm -hmm. it's almost a slippery slope is as soon as you start making videos of a certain caliber quality or consistency, you know, that, that is, that is one of the effective tools to, to gain your audience, to keep that conversation going. Um, and the, the quality, we'll talk about quality here. So consistency is different than quality, right? Even if it's really junky quality, you can still be consistent. And I mean, consistency is its own type of quality, but we're going to separate the two words quality. I want to talk about how nice the, the, the gear is, the equipment is when we talk about quality um, or maybe even the storytelling elements. So that's the next thing is quality is a way to start standing out right? Having my lower third right here, having your lower third, which way is that way? Nope, this way. Your lower third over there with your name. Um, that's a, that is a, a quality improvement that helps you stand out from the crowd. When somebody sees your live video and they notice that there's this cool split screen, screen thing going on, it adds something to, um, it adds something to the believability, the reputation of the people behind it. Um, and it's, it can be, I mean, sometimes that can be free, right? Like there's just applications and that you spent the extra second to go the extra mile to improve upon one of the quality elements makes a big difference to when there are, you know, the 500 hours of, of content that people are competing with standing out and having people click on your icon before they click on somebody else's icon. Cause if they're not watching your video, they're watching somebody else's. Mm -hmm. So you got to figure out how to stand out and, the, the initial quality is one way of doing that. Um, so that's another thing that I've noticed with my videos is so that my Long Beach local business videos, I have attempted to make them of a high enough quality that they're impossible to ignore. Um, I just launched a, a video newsletter, which might be something we can talk about too, is here's another effective use of video is instead of my just boring email, I have all of the videos that I have been creating um, little clips included in a video newsletter. I sent my first one out and the response, I mean, I'm looking at people, you know, so depending on your email platform, it'll show you how many people are opening it, you know, where they're opening it, the kind of, in, you know, there's metrics behind that. And my, my opens and my click throughs and my view rates are pretty good, all things considered. And again, it's like the quality was too good to ignore. It shows up in the inbox. It's like, oh, this is nice enough where it's like, I, I want to invest in that. I want to spend some time checking that out. Um, so that's another one. Um, regularity is another thing. You've been doing this, uh, this series. It's at least once a week, right? Every, every Friday. Is that right? Um, the webinars are always on Fridays at noon. Um, mm. I try to keep them every other Friday. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. when court was, a, court was never completely closed, but it was closed for the most part. They only did emergency motions. So, I knew going into this that my schedule might have to change. Um, but at least for right now, I, I try to keep it consistent, if that's the right word of the consistency, mm -hmm. on, on Fridays at noon so people would expect it. But I just did not have the time, as you said, time consuming. I could not do it every week. Right. But the weeks, that I, the weeks that I don't do the webinars on Fridays, I have my local business spotlight Wednesdays at four. And that's every week. So the local business spotlights every week and the webinars are about twice a month. That's a long with your question. No, <laughs> and it's good, but those re that regularity. And I, so I'm be, I'd be curious, my, I posit to my clients that being regular with the content like that in, in improves audience uh, viewership, that viewership goes up because people are starting to expect and look forward to events that are happening every week. And it becomes easier to uh, you know, ingest. Um, there's this old, and it's it's not a true thing. I've looked up the the stats on this, but there's the old marketing adage, the rule of seven. Um, and the rule of seven is that it takes seven impressions before a person will actually make any sort of decision on a thing. You have to get in front of them seven times. There's no science behind it, um, but there is just kind of the common knowledge behind it that like it, it takes a couple of times to have your brand be recognized and for people to feel comfortable. Um, I mean, if you see a person around town, you know, a hundred times, eventually, if you're standing in line beside each other for the you know 90th time, you're going to say, Hey, you know, <laughs> we stand in the same line next to each other. I should probably learn your name. 
Um, it's kind of the same way with regularity. So mm -hmm. video becoming regular is, is another important one. And these are things that it's just the hard work. There's no magic bullet of, of doing it. Um, you just kind of have to decide I'm going to do, take my videos and become regular, um, set the time aside and it becomes easier. Like it gets a little easier. It can get more boring as it gets easier. I mean, hard thing, hard things, challenging things are interesting, but, uh, mm -hmm. um, at least it will be take up less time as you move, you know, move forward and do it more often, at least on the planning side. That is true. I, I have noticed uh, things have changed doing this, you know, every week, but I'm sure the way that you do your videos is very different from the way that I do mine. So now that I know about some different, you know, apps and streaming services, like the one that we are using so that we can both talk without a delay at all um, across the country live and people can see both of our faces. Um, once I figured out how to use that, which was very user friendly and easy, um, that was everything just went so easy. Like I was able to plan in my calendar when I'm going to create this event because when I create it in StreamYard, which you all can see in the top corner, because that's the app that I'm using to stream this. Exactly. Above the, yeah. uh, put a little duck I, on my finger. Yep. Exactly. Perfect. See, um, I, I, I figured out once I scheduled this in StreamYard, it, it goes right to Facebook. It shows up on my Facebook page that this event is happening. And I did not know that it did that. I knew that originally, I knew that it scheduled the event, but it put a notification on Facebook. So I tried to work into my calendar. Okay, when do I want to start planning this? And I had, you know, on Sundays or Mondays or whatever it is, create the StreamYard event, which takes like five seconds. It's super easy. But, you know, my point is once you figure out how to use these things, you get into a rhythm, you know, you know, how far in advance you want to, you know, use this app or that app or whatever. And there are so many, so many different things out there. Um, and, and I actually wrote down a few things I wanted to ask questions about, but I didn't mm -hmm. want to interrupt you if you had, uh, if you wanted to talk about the rest of your um, effective strategies. No, no please, please. I mean, I, I've been kind of rambling them all over the board. I'm sorry. My brain's kind of just like, well, hopefully people are getting something in helpful, interesting. No, I mean, this is very helpful. It's helping. I, I've heard you say this a few times before and every time it's, it's helping even more. So I first met met Isaac. He was doing a presentation <laughs> with um, District Bliss, and um, I, I was attending that virtually online. It was a couple months ago, and he was talking about a very similar uh, topic, effective um, video strategies or YouTube strategies, something like that. And I was just I was just taking notes. I was just gonna watch it and just try to absorb. But I was just taking notes, and then I talked to him later, follow up with questions. He's just a wealth of information. Um, so what I wanted to, to talk about, I'm sure a lot of people probably have questions. Um, you know, if you wanna start doing videos, but you maybe don't have, or you don't have time or money or think that you don't have time or money, what is the best way to get started? Good. We'll back into it. I don't have a perfect answer yet, but let me tell you what I tell my clients, which is that, because it, when, when I'm telling my clients, I'm thinking about me helping them do it. But mm -hmm. what every which every person, every business, every sort of professional entity needs, I mean, you need an about me video. You need for people to know who you are, like who you are so that they can trust you, um, what you do, so how I can help you, What what is it that I'm offering you, um, what, uh, who you are, what you do. Uh, there's a third one. <laughs> um, I what you do. Um, is, it why it's, you it's, me? is it why you should, who I am, why you should hire me? That's probably it. Yeah. Maybe it might just be as simple as who you are and what you do. Okay. Um, and, but the, I mean, it's, it sounds simple, but there's a, a thousand ways to approach that, that question. Do you, build trust by telling them your history? Do you show them your portfolio? Mm -hmm. And then the medium um, changes too. Um, so if you have no idea, and that's that's opposite of what you wanted, that's to tell you that you could be overwhelmed. Um, yeah, it's overwhelming, but you just kind of got to pick, right? And and like, just go with something. I mean, I feel like, I feel like you just kind of pick a direction and, and lean into it. Um, the best ideas I have with clients come after three hours of hanging out and talking about movie trailers 
right? Like we sit down for coffee and we just go over like, Hey, what are we trying to do? And start talking. And then all of a sudden we'll, we'll get excited about something. And it's like, Oh, all of a sudden I'm excited about this idea. I didn't, I wasn't excited about anything five minutes ago or for the last two hours that we were talking all of a sudden mm-hmm. when we mentioned, you know, that Super Bowl commercial, it's just something in me clicks. and like, I want to do that. Um, and, and you just go with it. You just kind of go with it. And if it fails, you do it again. Um, and then if you still fail, like you do it again, because I've never, I've, I mean, I, <laughs> I talk about wanting to have a class where I'm teaching a film, like film studies class where you or a movie making class where you get the same script 10 times in a row. And throughout the course of the semester, like, Hey kids, go make this video 10 times. Cause you're never gonna, you're never gonna end up at a worse place than you started. Um, so just by can like just doing it, just do it again. And if you you know don't like it or if you don't connect with it, maybe change direction. But if yeah. you're excited about it, just like just go for it. Um, it's not the most quote unquote helpful, um, but it really is the place to start. The place to start is with what you have, and you you try it. Um, or you could hire somebody. I mean, that's the other one is you hire somebody who says this comes naturally to me. And for me, I've got my formats and the things that I know work. And I like to, to find opportunities to switch it up and do something different. But if nobody knows where to start, then what we'll do is we could do it right here. I, I start to say, it's like, all right, hey, Gene. So um, tell me about you know, what was the first time you ever decided to get into law? And like all of a sudden, there we go. We're off to the races. And you're telling me the story about you know what sparked your interest. Um, I actually, it's a good point that brings up um, some of the professional skills, like we talked about hardware and software. So mm-hmm. software, this is sort of, sort of a software question, knowing to ask the right questions. I mean, everybody's got a story, right? So where do you start? Start with your own story. Start with what you know. Um, I mean, I, that's what they told me in screenwriting class, right? Like start with what you know. Um, well, I know my own story. So that's the place to start. Um, and if you, if our goal is to tell people who you are and what you do, Well, then what makes, you know, what are the things that tell you who you are? How do you define yourself? Who are you? Oh, all of a sudden we just went into the sunken place, right? Who, who are you? Um, Well, you know, my first experience with film was, you know, fifth grade when my parents had a digital camera and I started doing vacation videos. I don't know. Um, But like that, that's a starting spot. And then, um, Hardware is editing. It's a, it's actually software, the editing software, but it hardware in this case. Um, and then cutting out the stuff that doesn't work. If it doesn't serve, knowing to to be able to cut it out, that's a magic tool too. If you don't want to cut it out, have conversations because people will watch a, a conversation that feels organic. And that's it's actually a shortcut. Um, live live events are a shortcut. So if you don't want to do the editing in post, then maybe start hosting live conversations, which have a natural and organic flow. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's a really good point because when I, if I could just throw some of my own experiences in here, when 100%. I, when, when I started doing these videos, I, I wanted to do a podcast too. I looked, um, which has been on my to-do list for a long time. Um, <laughs> I looked at, a, I looked at a bunch of different options and I looked at, you know, what, what I need to do to make this video look decent, you know, can I do this on my phone? Can I do this on my camera? Uh, you know, I found out that there was editing software, you know, I, I, there are, there is lighting that you can buy that's relatively inexpensive. There are headsets, you know, microphones, um, all that, all that different stuff. Um, and then I just got a, I just, I just started doing it and it, it's still on my list to buy those things. And if, if, you, if you're looking at this, you can see that there is a difference between the way Isaac looks and the way that I look, because I did my best with the tips and tricks that I have learned, but you know, I don't, I don't have the equipment that Isaac has, but um, the point is I've learned tips and tricks and I, I know about the things that I, I could purchase and I know about the editing software that I could purchase, but I have not had time to sit down and, and edit anything yet. And that might have been a reason why I decided to start doing the lives because, you know, if it initially, if it didn't, if I felt that it didn't go well, you know, I could just take it down. I don't have to, you know, put it anywhere. I don't have to put it on YouTube, you know? Um, but even, even still, I've, I've, 
there are, I put the videos on YouTube and I have not edited them. And oh gosh, Isaac's probably gonna kill me. But I, I didn't think that there was a need to. Um, and I, I, I'm just there's, kind of going off on a, on a tangent again. But anyway, my, my point was, um, <laughs> if I have a point, that um, I, I learned things that I could do myself and I learned things that other people could do to help me. Um, so I guess it just depends on, you know, what, what you are trying to do with your particular video and, and how much you, you know, need the, you know, or want, you know, the editing and, um, I don't know. Sorry. I'll, so, I'll no, I think, I think you bring up a good, no, I think you bring up a really good point is, I mean, you kind of hedge that, like, oh, I was going to kill me for not editing, but <laughs> that's not like, that's not the case. Cause there is a point of diminishing returns, right? Like I use a nice camera. In fact, just because it's interesting to me. Um, like I have an, an interesting setup. Let's see if we can do it. I actually put my normal DSLR camera and you guys can kind of see it there and a nice microphone. Um, I use those things because I am a video professional and I want to, uh, it, it's like a marketing tool for me, right? Where it does, it does something different. But if I were, if I wanted to tell people that I was the best storyteller, I would not probably use video at all. Like if all I was doing was telling stories, I'd probably shut the video off entirely because like, what's the point of seeing me talk? Um, if I'm just trying to tell you a story, then it's all about the engagement in, you know, the sentences and the word structure and the phrases. Um, so the, the point here is that you got to use the tools that are, that are best for the thing you're trying to do. And it's not always super duper high quality. It's not always super duper, <laughs> Um, great gear. Um, the lighting that you've got is totally sufficient. I mean, what you do is bring in the people who have interesting things to say. Anybody who's already familiar with your format, they're not going to care what it looks like. The, the, the thing that gets people in the door is not the thing that keeps them, right? Mm -hmm. You need people to show up to your video series here. And a nice camera might do that. But once people are here, once they're invested in what we're talking about, they're not going to care what the video actually looks like. And just having that knowledge to, to say, you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's worth, what's it worth to me? What am I trying to do? If I'm trying to get people in the door, then I'm going to use a different tool. If I'm trying to get people to, to stay um, again, then, then that's kind of a different tool. Uh, yeah, and, and this is not, I'm sorry, it's probably not helpful. It's only food for thought and an interesting kind of psychological study. But um, it's, 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 to me at least, interesting to think about what the impression is. The impression is that we need all these things. Mm -hmm. But the, the in practice, I feel like there, there should be a balance there, that there should be this balance of, that my storytelling should be well there I, I found it it's it's the distraction right what's the distraction the distraction is i need this great video and if i only had great video people will come and stay for my thing well they might come and look at it but if you don't know how to tell a good story or how to just to, to structure a conversation or what i what i do is ask the right questions ask really good questions um then then people will be like this looks great but i'm bored <laughs> And I'm not going to stick around for that. So what, what I try to do with my clients and what I'm doing with my Long Beach local business videos is I'm trying to marry all those different things together. Um, and I readily admit that like my videos try to walk a line, just who I am and the way that I tell my stories. They're never exactly one thing. I like to be, you know, both personal and professional. Mm -hmm. And so a person who walks away from the videos are going to be like, wait, I was engaged the entire time and I liked it. I'm not exactly sure what I should do with that. And I'm like, that's exactly where I want my audience. I want them to be, to be thinking a little bit more about how to engage. Um, it's not what a commercial does commercials, like a, like what you see on Hulu in between the, you know, shows or whatever is yeah. they're always going to be shameless with what you should, you know, what you should do. And they're, they're candy, they're popcorn. They're great. And they're fun. And I like making them. Uh, making commercials is something that is necessary, um, but they they're it's different. It's just sort of a different thing, and I use the different tools for myself. Now, I here's where I let's talk about COVID. Now, let's go back to videos during the time of COVID. Um, it is my opinion, and I have I I stake 
I, I put my professional, um, I risk professionally that the clients I have get videos from me that aren't the, the newsletter. Here's how we're dealing with COVID um, stories that I just get so inundated with right now. Um, and I, I feel like those shameless plugs are exhausting. Mm-hmm. And I'm exhausted by seeing all the shameless, here's how we're dealing with our current circumstances, because it's like, we're, we're still here, you know, we're still, you know, oh, look at us right here, we got, you know, stuff, don't forget about us. Um, when the, the, the zeitgeist, the thing in the air is like, we're in a season of community service. So there is a line to walk where as I'm doing the same things, the story that I'm telling my audience, the way that I'm framing this, the videos that I'm making uh, right now, and this changes, and I might be wrong, really should have the tone of like, you know, let, we're actually giving you something like the video itself or the things that we're doing are a community service that is going to be beneficial for you to know about. And if it's not, then it reads as an advertisement and people don't like being sold things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I turn, I have ad blockers. I put ad blockers on all my browsers. I think most people have some sort of ad blocker. They've got a spam folder (laughs) for spam emails. We don't want to be sold things without having that connection. But video is the tool that helps right now. People form those connections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Again, I tangented. (laughs) No, that's okay. I, I, I think we're going to have to create that as a word, tangented. It's now a verb. <laughs> because uh, oh, you can verb anything. Exactly. There you go. Um, but you said a couple things that I, I wanted to follow up on. You you were talking about how you thought you did a good job um, if, if, you're, if a video looks personal and professional, like if somebody was really engaged but didn't know quite what to take from it, or I'm not doing what you said justice. But that really resonated with me because I was thinking about, you know, so many different videos that I've seen lately in webinar. I'm looking at my notes. Sorry, I shouldn't mm-hmm, do that. Mm-hmm. Webinar no, no that I have, uh, I've, you know, participated in, in that, you know, there's a lecture and people could ask questions. And there were some webinars that were very informative on a variety of issues, but they're not really standing out. Like I know that I learned something from them, but it's not really resonating with me because you know, it, it didn't hold my attention. There was no, and I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's just the way that I prefer to watch videos, like a back and forth, but it just, just talking at me, even though I'm there, you know, in a Zoom meeting, it it, it just wasn't really, I don't know, just, it, it didn't stand out. Like, I don't remember, you know, what it was, but, you know, things like this, videos that I've seen um, that are different than just somebody talking at you, um, it did stick with me. And, and I also wanted to ask you because we're talking about vid- doing videos during COVID. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's really the only option for a lot of people. And I don't know re- where I'm really going with this, but there, there are a lot of people I think who have a fear of the camera and they have a fear of public speaking because this is public speaking, because how many people are we talking to right now? It's, it's, a lot because <laughs> we're not oh, i hope so <laughs> we're not looking into their eyes you know we can't see how many people are there um so in one way i would say it, it would be a little bit easier for somebody that has a fear of public speaking i like speaking but i just don't like being on video so maybe it was a little bit easier for me to make that transition so that's a long-winded way of me getting into my question. <laughs> what would you say to people who have a fear of the camera? Uh, yeah, I mean, can anybody do this? Can anybody do what we are doing in in some way with their business? I hire spokespeople, right? Like that's one of the things that I I tell people is like you don't if you're a business then like your business what is it? I think you like it's legally a person, right? So like having a spokesperson or whatever. Um, like it's it, you are allowed. There's no wrong answer. Like if you if you don't want to be the one, like then have somebody else do it. Like that's fine. It's totally fine. Like you have permission to do whatever you want. Um, like nobody has to. Nobody's forcing anybody to like get in front of the camera. Um, can well, anybody? I'm not... Oh, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. I was no, just gonna I'm... say. I mean, that probably would make a lot of people feel comfortable because you know they don't have the the owner of that business that does not want to be in front of that camera or whoever it is that might be tasked with it, they don't have to do it. They, I mean, somebody else 
can 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 do what we are doing, you know, for any business, right? Doesn't have to be the owner. As long as they have, you know, enough knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so that that actually brings up a good point because you talked about um you talked about going to webinars that you weren't engaged in and with. So that there, there is where we go back to one of the benefits of working with somebody who knows video or learning about you know effective video strategies. To know video is to know is another way of saying to know my own story well. To know yeah. what I'm like, what is my messaging? So the when I am trying to help people um, select me for their services, right? When, they're, when I'm trying to try to make a sale, um, I, I make sure they know it's a transformative process. Going through working with me will not, you're like, you're going to be a different, you're going to have a different perspective of your own company and yourself by the time we're done. And that's a weird thing to say. It's like, oh, we're just trying to make a video. It's like what I do as a, as a professional storyteller, as a professional who's trying to help market companies is to listen very carefully, to ask the right questions, and then to frame it in a way that is interesting to the, a person who's listening. Um, one of, one of the, the skills, so let me talk, I mean, forgive me for talking about myself for like a moment, but like what makes me, I think, good at what I do is um, some of the like, values I hold as an individual and back in I think it was college I like learned about this idea of cognitive complexity it was perfect um, the example was like how, can you understand why somebody would do the thing they did even if you totally disagree with it what would make and they I mean, we were talking I think it was a like a history class we had just watched um, the the boy with the pajamas boy in the striped pajamas if you know about this movie, but it's about a, like a kid in a um, Jewish concentration camp in Nazi Germany. And we ended the film and then we're talking about it in class. Like, how do you, how do you sympathize with like, like, how do you understand why you would do what you would do if you are a Germany, a German in Germany during Nazi you know, regime? Mm -hmm. And can you, can you have some empathy for that? Um, like nobody wants to, to be that person, but can you get why, why they are in the situation they are in and that process of under trying to understand why somebody who is doing something that you think is just awful would do that is the cognitive complexity. And it was, it put into words something that I couldn't, that I want, that I like. They put into words something that I didn't have words for, which is I want to be able to understand why somebody who is doing something would do it. Because so nobody's nobody makes bad decisions, right? Like nobody's thinking to themselves, I'm gonna make a bad decision today. I'm gonna go yeah. over there and choose to do something which is dumb, right? Like if you're speeding, you're not thinking like I'm gonna speed and I'm gonna get in trouble. Um, but like but they do it and it's a good idea to them at the time. Everybody has this thing that like their world, their circumstances, it's a good like I'm doing the thing that I think is best. Um, and we're all in that space. And be because that is the case now I can approach my own video is like, why is it that what I think I'm going to be doing is a good idea? Or if I'm trying to help a person tell their story is like, what is it that makes me, that makes me think what I'm doing is the best thing to possibly be doing. And if I approach my own story with that sort of like the, the forgiveness of like, if I make a mistake, like I, I am just doing what I think is best and being able to, to talk about that in a way where I help somebody else understand why what I am doing is the best decision for myself or vice versa. If, um, if I'm trying to sell a product, how can you get into the world of your audience? So you, know, you as a person who I have a business, let me help you understand your audience. Why do they want to, to change their mind about a purchasing decision or whatever? And so we, we start to talk about, the story of a person and framing it as what are the, the foundational, what are the foundational beliefs or just opinions that a person has that we can talk to that help you understand your story. Now that's all super complicated, <laughs> a way of saying um, you're just going to tell people like, I want to have a really great experience writing with my ballpoint pen. 
And when I sign checks, I want to feel good about signing checks and, or, or whatever it is I'm writing about. And I'm going to be spending, you know, 4% of my day writing these checks. And I want to make sure that anybody who sees me doing this, you know, thinks that I'm a trustworthy person as I'm signing it. So that's why I have a pen that looks okay. I don't just use a BIC. I use, you know, a, a pen that's got a nice thing. And all of a sudden I've given impetus to why I'm making decisions that somebody else might think like, why is that guy using a hundred dollar pen, a pen that's a hundred dollars. It's cool. I'm signing $10,000 checks every day. Like, but you don't, you know, I need to make the people for whom I am working feel good about the process I'm doing. I'm adding value. I'm actually valuing you because I'm, you know, if I'm writing you that check, I want you to make sure that I know I'm taking this very seriously. And that's just mm -hmm. one example of how we approach our stories when we're telling video is that we'll end up changing our own beliefs. And this is the thing. Most of my clients don't have this experience for themselves. They can't tell you that, that like, as like the reason why I need to have a hundred dollar pen is so that I can you know, build trust into my audience. And if they're selling that pen or if whatever, they don't have the, the language. So if I'm, if I'm the maker of that pen, it's like, I like this pen and it's a good quality pen, but I don't have a story to tell to other people or to myself that helps people believe in that product. And so coming out on the far end of making really high quality videos, you're, a, a client or an audience is going to have a very different perspective on what they do and how much they believe in themselves. And that, that belief will actually get a lot of people in front of the camera too. If you don't feel good about getting in front of a camera, a lot of times because they don't know what their own story is. Mm -hmm. So how do I get in front of a camera? Well, you have to start with <laughs> being confident about that, what you're offering. And if you don't have a clear understanding of your own story, it's always very hard to get in front of a camera. Um, that was like a really long way of talking about how to get in front of a camera. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, that, that was a lot of really good information. And I didn't really think about it that way, being confident in what your story is. Um, yeah. I, I, I just recently joined Toastmasters to help me become a better public speaker. And I, I was just watching, um, speaking of videos, <laughs> they have this great video library of short videos that are very specific. Some are 50 seconds, some are two minutes, some are five minutes, but they're short. And one of them was, what if I can't think of what to talk about? And then all these suggestions that they said, start with you. What is your story? Nobody, nobody knows what your story is, you know, and, and that's, and then, and then I guess that's, that's another way to get excited about something too. I mean, talk about, I don't know, something that you're passionate about. Again, I've tangented, chan tangented. Um, but I mean, what you said makes sense, right? So if, if you're talking about, about yourself, you, you, I know what my story is. I know a little bit about what your story is, just a very little bit. But you could, you could talk all day about your story, things that I have no idea about. And, and same here. And ugh, me just talking, it made me think of something else. Maybe people don't want to tell their story. Maybe they think that people don't want to hear their story or that it's not interesting to other people. Have you ever come across that? And this is why having really good questions is such a such a skill. Um, I talk about how the best storytelling in America is um, a great old radio show, now podcast, This American Life. It's incredible. For those who know it, it's wonderful. Um, but I kind of noticed what makes that stand apart. Um, and in listening to interviews with Ira Glass, it's like really, really asking the right questions and really knowing like how to ask good, interesting questions. And so if a person doesn't want to tell their story, um, I mean, first of all, having somebody else asking a question of them makes it way easier to get going. Mm -hmm. And then having, having a really good question asker on the far side of that to not just ask, but then to listen carefully, hear mm -hmm. that there is something and then be like, oh, it sounds like what you're saying is such and such and such. And then all of a sudden the person has this moment where it's like, oh, I never <laughs> thought about it that way. Yeah. And then they'll like, they'll just like, they'll go down, right? They're just, just going to start telling their story. So yeah. what I do, and let's talk about Long Beach Local Business again for like a, a second. With this particular series, I'm using all these skills. And I go to the business and I say, when was the first time you heard about COVID? My standard questions are, what are the first time you heard about COVID? Um, what was the first time it, it impacted you? What was the first affect it had on you? Um, 
And then you know, what, what did you do about it? Like, how are you, how are you dealing with that now? What does the future look like for you considering all the stuff that's going on? Um, you know, what, what are your takeaways? What's your takeaway from all this? When, when we're looking at how all of the things that we've changed and how our businesses have changed, like what are we taking away from all this? Um, and then I always finish by saying like, hey, what are your offerings? Like, what do you offer people? I was like, oh, oh yeah. Um, and then they'll talk about what they do mm -hmm. and how they're trying to help people. And when you've got all this other context, all of a sudden their offerings take on just a very different impression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I forget what the question was. I feel like I answered it, but I forget what the question was. <laughs> I don't remember what my question. Oh, my question was if people think that nobody wants to hear their story and you mentioned uh, uh, that's yeah. why you know the right questions to ask. Right. And, and I, there's nothing I, I have clients will say, I, I don't know. I'm bored by this. And it's like the stuff that you're bored about. If you have a good, if you've got a good interviewer, mm -hmm. um, nothing's boring. There's nothing that isn't, interesting if you frame it right everything's interesting and and maybe it's not interesting to everybody but it's interesting to the right person and that's part of my my job too is as a video professional i'm figuring out how to make it like who is this interesting to and then to frame it to the people who, to whom i think it will be interesting um and again i can send it a lot of different ways if we wanted to talk to a very different clientele we just changed the the, the framing of the conversation mm -hmm. and the content is one thing the the context of the content is another i mean even doing a video on facebook is going to be different than doing a video on like i mean instagram or snapchat is that still a thing um, i think so I think but so. we all have different like we, we use the tools differently and we kind of contextualize them in different ways and um, just being aware and kind of picking it and not letting yourself get overwhelmed with the options, but to saying, just like, I'm just going to do this one. I know this one who cares about the other ones, they'll fall in line. Um, and that like the, it, it normally is an organic process of, you know, stick with one mm -hmm. and then go from there. I am so glad that you said that. Hold on one second, because I am taking notes again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm curious. So you, you mentioned, you know, the way that you do a video is different for Facebook and for YouTube. And for example, so right now, like right now at 1256 Eastern Pacific time on June, whatever day this is, 19th. June, June 19th, Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. Happy Juneteenth. We, um, so, so we're on Facebook and I told people check, tell us where you're checking in from. Um, give it, oh, I didn't say this. Give us a like or a love or a thumbs up or a wow face. Wow Smash face. that subscribe button. <laughs> yeah, no, but if this was, if this was on you and, and if I say all that and I don't think about YouTube, I'm not telling people to subscribe for when this video eventually goes on YouTube. And I remember I recently, oh, I'm going to spill the beans about something. I figured out how to record and live stream it later. Eh, maybe nobody heard this from the webinar, but there's going to be a video that comes out later on this live stream um, where I tell them to like and comment and all that stuff. But then I also say, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe. And it just, I thought I should do it. And I'm like, oh, that sounds so stupid because if people are watching it on Facebook or I'm telling them to like it and then subscribe, but I just did it and I'm not gonna edit it out. So we'll just see how it goes. I, I just well, want to that comment because you were talking about the different platforms and there are, there are ways to go about doing the videos on the different platforms. Obviously you can't subscribe on Facebook. You can't, I guess you can like on YouTube, but yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I mean, especially considering your audience, like I don't know if your audience is going to be, you know, millennials who are used to liking, subscribing and commenting. Right. I just don't know. I have no idea who, who's it going to be, but for those who don't know to do that, now you've told them for the people who know, they just be like, Ugh, they'll roll their eyes, but they'll be fine. They'll survive. But, oh, really? but you might get I'm supposed to tell them to subscribe because every time I see a YouTube video, it tells me to like and subscribe. Yeah, no, I mean, do, do it. I think it's exhausting. I, every time I hear it, I make fun of people for doing it. But that's because I know if I'm going to subscribe, I'm going to subscribe. I don't need to be told to do it. But my mom does. She needs to be told. She wouldn't do it. She wouldn't know to. She might even hear that and be like, oh, I need to do that and not know how to do it. Um, 
Mm-hmm. But that's, I mean, again, it doesn't hurt to, to, to say like, Hey, if, if this content is valuable or interesting or whatever, it actually means a lot to me. It costs you very little. It, mm-hmm. you push a button and there's no, like, I know that sometimes there's like shame or guilt, like, oh, they're going to know I pushed the button, but it's like, you know what? Nobody's paying attention to what you yourself, you like or not like. So it costs you nothing. Just, just hit that subscribe button or like it because that actually means a lot to me. And it means very little to you. And I can just say that and I can, don't have to be you know weird about it. Mm-hmm. Did we just make it weird? Sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't even think about it that way. Great. But what what would be what would be your comment? I guess about what I I said that I did because I didn't plan to say that. I told people, you know, like, leave a comment, and then if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, hit like and subscribe. Does that does it sound silly? I mean, because people who who know anything about this are watching the video and they know what I'm doing, okay. or just not thinking about name, it. Name name anybody who has. Name any video you've ever seen on Facebook where they said that or opposite or anybody on YouTube who said something about Facebook. Can you think or remember anything? Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> Does it matter? It, it's fine. Um, for the video content, we're so used to z- tuning out the things that we don't have interest in. We, I sit there on Instagram, right? And how much stuff do I look at versus how much stuff do I actually scroll past? I mean, I'm actually looking at maybe one one hundredth of that content. Mm-hmm. I can't think of anything I saw on Instagram yesterday. I can't remember a single one. I can't think of anything I remember seeing this week. It was a cute dog. I do remember a cute dog I saw. That's about it. However many posts I scrolled past this week, the rest of it just kind of turns into noise. So if I can, in the 10 seconds I have your attention, say something that helps me out a little bit, like, hey, push the subscribe button like that's fine or if i'm putting content for wherever it goes it's cool the shelf life of videos these days it's just not long enough to be worried too much about um not doing something that is in service to yourself there are limits to that my long beach local business videos i am making hopefully with a 20 year long shelf life i hope that 20 years from now they will still have some value. So I'm behaving a little bit differently in those videos. I'm trying to really contextualize them. And I, I mean, even in those videos, I have things like eh, push the like subscribe and I have it on text at the bottom. I don't say it myself, but like, you know, who knows if that's going to be a thing 20 years from now, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but I'm not, I don't have to worry too much about um, the stuff that goes into my video. Um, because we people tune out the things that are not important to them, and I can use I can use that to my advantage. Yeah. What do you mean you can use it to your advantage? Oh, um, knowing that people are going to ignore stuff, like I can spend an extra second hedging something that might be useful to me right now, that they're just <laughs> going to tune out. Um, I can give them information about, I mean, in this video, I might tell you about an event that's happening tomorrow. Well, on Sunday, no one's going to, um, on Sunday, nobody's going to have, you know, it's not going to matter anymore, but that doesn't mean I don't put it in this video. Um, I put it here because if it happens to help somebody get to a thing they need, that's a community service I can give them right now mm-hmm. for tomorrow. And it might waste somebody's time on Sunday, but I'm not, not doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So, I mean, I'm taking, I think the, the, the takeaway from that is I'm, I'm taking advantage of whatever I can using video right now, because this con- contextually, our conversation is it, it's, it's scope is present. It's relevant right now and today. And it's reach is not, you know, super international thousands and thousands and thousands of people. I might behave differently if my medium was not so intimate, but we have an intimate medium. So I'm going to have more intimate dialogues. Um, And Mm -hmm. if I expect that my video is going to be for Long Beach, then I'm going to, you know, have different content in that video than if I'm making a video for, you know, America and the UK. Um, Mm -hmm. I I can tune it. I can tune those conversations to my audience. 
Uh, I have a couple of notes here. Let me just take a make, make sure I touched on all the things that I, I was hoping that we could talk about. Storytelling. Um, a base, so, you know, I think I got all of it. I mean, there are things we talked about gear and how you can have a nicer camera, but it, it's it's got diminishing returns, right? This, how nice my camera is, is only going to go so far. But once I have that knowledge, it's good forever. Um, right. So maybe, I mean, depending on what, how much time you want to invest, invest on the front end for the long-term benefits um, might be worth it. But don't let don't let that be a distraction to not do it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we covered so much stuff. I, if, if uh, you have time, I would, love, no, 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 I would love to have you back again to talk about more specific things. Like we can maybe just talk about the equipment, the hardware, which is really the, you know, the software that, which is really the hardware, um, you know, things like that. But what, what I got out of all of this is number one, don't, don't, let the fear or, you know, the cost distract you, uh, you know, don't get overwhelmed with all the different, you know, equipment that you can buy, just start doing something, stick with one platform or maybe two, like don't get overwhelmed with the number of different places you could go live, for example. Right. Yeah. Good. Um, high quality is important. Consistency, regularity, having a story to tell and having, having good questions or a person to ask you good questions and then content and context because the, the content is not going to make sense if you don't put it in context. Yeah. I just realized all that is it's so broad. It's so like, here's on the very surface, all these like things, each of those is a deep dive. Um, well, it, yeah. That's what we could do like seven of these videos, but, but I, I mean, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. You, you do want high quality, but at the same time you're saying, you know, don't, don't let that distract you. Don't just not take advantage of this medium. And like you said, right now, the video that we're doing live on Facebook, that's going to your audience and my audience, we're both treating it differently than if it was a completely different audience or a, you know, a different platform or something. Um, right. Like for example, my, your Long Beach local business and my Manassas or, or Virginia local businesses, I, I talk to people like everybody that's watching you know, is in Manassas or comes to Manassas a lot because that's the whole point of it. But right now I'm talking to you across the country and what we're talking about, um, you know, is relevant to anybody really who's thinking about making a video, right? right? So the way we're going about it is different even though neither one of us probably thought that through before this. It's just the way that we approach the dialogue and the questions, right? Right, and what's, I mean, and just as a way of example, like, look how video transcends geographic spheres, right? Um, and that's that's just one more one more way in which video um, is such a good tool because I I can make I can if I'm if my product is video somehow, if I'm trying to offer you know just good advice that serves me here locally, but my if it's good enough, then I have an, a global audience who might key into it. I make the right video which is again, if it's, if it's a community service, then it applies to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. if, if I'm just trying to tell you like, Hey, here's how you find a really good tenant to rent your apartment building, right? Like you've got a room and you, here's my instructions to you, how to find, how to screen for really good tenants. Like that is a skill that everybody in the world could benefit from. And if I'm getting traction on that one video, well, that's obviously going to serve me here in my local community. Mm -hmm. Um, and video tran transcends that and video gives us that sort of opportunity. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Our approach to it, um, uh, our approach to it can really uh, d depict how it serves us, right? I, th mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. But okay, good. <laughs> so, seriously, I was I was taking so many oh notes. Gosh. I have to... Yeah, and the things that are circled are things that I want to do future webinars on. So I I'm here. I'm here for you. <laughs> if you will grace us with your presence again, I would love to Anytime. have you back because there, there, there are really so many things. I mean, we we could do we could do shorter conversations, but to talk more in depth about some of these things because I think they're they're really important. You know, 
maybe somebody who, who has a fear of getting in front of the camera, maybe we need to talk a little bit more, you know, about that. Because I think everybody should be doing it. But like you said, there's a right way to do it, you know? So maybe helping people get, get over that. Um, and then maybe the, the word evergreen content, I've seen a lot lately. There's evergreen content. That's content that, you know, can last forever. Or there's stuff that we're talking about right now, like what people are doing during COVID and during the different phases of reopening. I'm not the expert here. I'm just telling you guys some things that I have learned. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, my point is there are just so many different things we could talk about that could be relevant to people who, for some reason, like strawberry ice cream or people who, you know, like the better kind of ice cream, like chocolate peanut butter ice cream. So, Boo. <laughs> What's another one? What's another? Oh, coffee, uh, ice cream, plain chocolate. The the flavor of preference here in the house has been cookie dough, Ch chocolate chip cookie dough, chocolate chip cookie dough. That's what everybody in and our freezer is full of the stuff. We sometimes have two cartons of it in there. Strawberry. I got strawberry one time and they all booed me. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. If strawberry was in my house, I would not be very happy. I bought, I bought this. It's called a protein pint. It was a peanut butter cup protein pint with my latest um, grocery order. I know it sounds kind of weird. Peanut butter protein pint ice cream. It's like high protein, high fiber, low fat. I ate that whole pint myself in like two days. It was so good. Uh, it reminds me of that moment in Miss Congeniality. She says, I'll have a pint, Jim. And he, she pops out the bar and he brings out the Ben and Jerry's pint of ice cream. It was great. Good moment. <laughs> great movie. <laughs> Right on. Um, did we get any comments, questions? I, I want to make sure that I, I serve the people that you know might might have any uh, things. I've got a minute if we uh, need to talk about them. Um, my computer's starting to freeze up here. Yeah, that's that's the uh, sound of frustration, frustrated clicks. I understand. Oh, no. <laughs> you can, look how good that sound quality is. You can hear me clicking. Um, something about um, equipment and a camera. Do you need, would you suggest that somebody have a separate camera or can they just use the camera that's on their computer if they want to do what we're doing? I mean, I think that you can use the stuff on your camera without, or the, I think you use the camera on your computer without any, any resistance. It is the, what people are expecting right now. People expect this stuff. Um, it is, if you want to increase gravity, then, you know, upgrades. Um, mm -hmm. But again, that just gets people in the door. It's sort of, you know, it's the flashy thing out front. Um, it's the sex appeal is having how much, you know, how nice your video quality is. But the, the content, I mean, content is king. Um, what we don't want is we don't want people to be distracted. Um, and sometimes video quality can be a distraction. Um, if it looks good, that can be a reason to, to keep watching. But if it's, and more important than, vi than video, honestly, is audio, especially nowadays. Audio quality is way more important because if, I, if the video looks awesome, but all of a sudden, because you've muted yourself and now like audio, the, how much audio you have is such an important part, right? Okay. So you've got to have really good audio before you have really great video, in my opinion. That's um, a really good point. Audio first. Yeah, because- Captions or, or, you know, who knows what. Mm -hmm. Isaac, there are so many things that I want to talk about on future videos. <laughs> I will keep talking for hours. I'm just making notes about so many things. Um, I think we, I think sometime I would love to have a conversation with you about some of the things that I have learned and the things that I've implemented and your thoughts on them. And you don't have to, uh, you don't have to hold back any punches. You can let me know, but I think it would be useful for people to hear that because they probably have the same questions I do, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah, totally. Oh. Yeah, it, these are this is the this is a common struggle. And at the beginning of quarantine, I got lots of conversations. Um, people were reaching out to me asking, like, "Hey, uh, you know, how do I get started doing this?" So the, the the struggle is real, and the problems are are the same for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. Which is why I also have 
I've been trying to start a uh, sort of a tech support group. And if that's something some people are interested in, we can get details out there later. But um, I've got a, uh, I've got a Patreon, which is just another website where um, I can engage with my audience, but it's, it's a subscription based thing. And I'm trying to get my patrons um, looped into my, my like tech support group online so that if anybody's got video questions, I can, you know, pop into um, the Patreon or my private Facebook group and help people out over there. Um, so that's like the, the, the problems are not, are not uncommon to be the same, right? It's a lot of people have the same problems. Um, and so talking to you about what's going on with yours and your own experience would be very beneficial to a lot of people. I've seen that quite a bit. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that though. Um, Isaac, if you could put your contact information and your website and information for the Long Beach Local Business Project, all of that into the comments so people can go check it out. Um, and for your tech. Oh, there she goes. I don't know if I'm still here, everybody, but uh, something happened. Um, I will indeed get all that information put up onto the comment section. Um, I'm presuming that she's talking about the Facebook, which I don't have um, the link right up right here. Uh, so I will find out and tune in for that. I guess we're going to hang out to see if Jean shows back up again. She's probably going to take a minute. Could have been battery issue or who knows what. Um, in fact, if you want to bear with me, I'll see if I can pull up the uh, page right now. Um, just to see if I can find questions, if you guys have any more questions. Mm, let me see. I think that she put it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know precisely where she went off to um, or where she posted these videos. Uh, how can I get your comments? Let's see. Hmm. Well, how about this? Let me show a video. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, and I can show you one of my Long Beach Local Business videos. And uh, we'll see if that um, fills in some time. Mm -hmm. Okay, bear with me, everybody here. My videos. YouTube's coming along. All right, let's see if I can share my screen. Okay, you're seeing me. Here we go. Oh, actually, let me show you a different one. I talked a little bit earlier about the trademark brewing video where we turned beer into hand sanitizer. This is that video. Hopefully the audio comes in as well.
Okay, I think that uh, nobody was even watching that. I don't even think that it showed up there. But uh, for anybody who's still looking, um, it's great seeing you. And uh, thanks for sticking around. We'll catch you next time. All right, I'm out. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jean will be available. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to smash her subscribe and like button. And uh, we'll, we'll catch you later. All right.